Hey everyone, geophysicist Stefan Burns here with an update on that earthquake swarm that's occurring in Idaho near Stanley. This is pretty close to Boise. This earthquake swarm has been going off for more than a couple weeks now and has been accelerating near the end of May and into June. So we've been having more earthquakes and higher magnitude earthquakes. Well, we just had a new magnitude 4.3 earthquake strike just nearby. And the strongest earthquakes in this swarm have been magnitude 4. So a pretty big jump to go to a 4.3 due to how earthquake energy scales. And this is near Clayton. That was at 1700 universal time yesterday, June 8th. And well, you see that we are inching closer and closer to Yellowstone supervolcano, a massive supervolcano located directly in the middle of the North American continent. And so a lot of people, of course, are very interested in what's happening at Yellowstone. They're very concerned about what's happening at Yellowstone. Uh, so far, everything seems to be stable there, but we have a lot of earthquake activity just nearby in Idaho outside of Boise. And in the last video, a lot of people asked, hey, is this related to oil and gas drilling and fracking? And well, most of that is occurring in this region. So this is not related to that. There was a magnitude 6.5 earthquake that occurred on March 31st, 2020, near the location of this swarm. And what's interesting is I crunched the data. We had a huge spike in the cumulative energy released from that earthquake. And then that started to decline afterwards because there's a lot of aftershocks. But then it's now been ramping up starting with 2025. And in fact, June has already set the record for 2025 for cumulative energy released, and we're only nine days in thus far, and not even that. So this earthquake swarm seems to really be ramping up the overall tectonic activity of this zone. Now we have this new magnitude 4.3 that struck just within 24 hours near Clayton, and we're getting closer and closer to Yellowstone supervolcano. This could be completely unrelated, or perhaps there's something deeper at play. Switching over to our USGS latest earthquakes map set for the past seven days showing all earthquakes. We see quite a lot of earthquakes across the United States, in New Mexico, and some even on the East Coast. The size of the circle corresponds to the magnitude of the earthquake. So there's nothing particularly unusual about what we're seeing here. A lot of earthquakes in California and also up in Washington, Oregon. We get earthquakes along the Rockies even some here down in Texas, usually due to like oil and gas and fracking, some even on the East Coast, so that's much more rare. To turn our hazard map, we see that this lines up with our zones of greatest seismic risk because that's where you have the largest faults and the greatest potential for a high magnitude earthquake. So you see California has the, the red zone there. We also see quite a bit of elevated risk here. There's New Madrid. We have the East Tennessee seismic zone and then also a little bit down there South Carolina on the coast. Okay, well, if we look at our list here, this is set to show all earthquakes on the map and it's sort of by largest magnitude. We see this 4.9 there in Mexico is the strongest earthquake that we've had in this zone for the past seven days. Let's exclude the one from Mexico. Boom, 4.3 for Clayton, Idaho is top of the list. And then you'll also notice a 4.0 for Nevada. Uh, but if we punch in specifically here, on our earthquakes, we see now 4.3 at the top, two magnitude fours for this seismic swarm near Stanley, then 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.8. A lot of earthquakes have been occurring in this zone over the past week, as you can see. So I decided to sum up all the energy released from these earthquakes for the year 2025. Let's look at the results. Here we have a data graphic showing just how much energy has been released near Stanley, Idaho, measured in megawatt hours, and this is cumulative by month, actually going all the way back to 2020. And so we'll see here the most recent data point for June. Of course, we haven't gone through all June, only the first third or so. We see that our cumulative seismic energy release has been going up sharply. We also experienced a spike there in January. Uh, but if we go back to 2020, we see this massive increase in the energy release in this area because of that magnitude 6.5. Now this scale here is logarithmic. So we're measuring this in megawatt hours. It's a conversion you can do to take the magnitude, to turn it into joules, and then turn into watt hours and megawatt hours, even gigawatt hours. And so every single one of these jumps is a 10x increase as you can see. 
So right before that earthquake, the energy released in this area was very, very low. Basically, this area wasn't really seismically active, at least at that moment in time. Then we had a massive, massive jump to about 100,000 megawatt hours of energy released because that 6.5, and then there was a long duration earthquake aftershock swarm that occurred going all the way into 2024. Things finally cooled off. Look at now how things are starting to rebound, which is very interesting. So it seems that magnitude 6.5 loosened up some of those faults and Gerald just kind of woke the area up. And now about five years later, we are starting to increase once more on our energy release from that zone. And this data point right there is 177 megawatt hours thus far for the month of June. And I calculated out the megawatt hours for that 4.3 that just occurred near Clayton, and that is 49 megawatt hours. So that one earthquake makes up just a little under one third of the cumulative energy released in June for that earthquake swarm, showing how earthquake magnitude really matters as it relates to understanding this release of seismic energy. So in general, things are really accelerating there. Keep in mind, all these are fairly low magnitude earthquakes. It's not a magnitude 6.5 like we had there March 31st, 2020, but that seemed to wake everything up. So let's talk about it. Here we have a video from the Idaho Geologic Survey for a little bit longer than a year showing the earthquake activity near Stanley. Check this out. We see this magnitude 6.5 pop off. Look at all the aftershocks that occurred throughout that area. And so it is a little spread out too. We see that some are also occurring in some of these adjoining faults nearby. But in general, the big burst of activity was immediately after that 6.5. And in general, they're clustering right around that historic epicenter. And you notice it basically continued for a long time as we just saw with that data graphic showing the cumulative seismic energy released from Stanley Idaho going through 2020. So this magnitude 6.5 A was a big earthquake and it really woke things up for that area, only about 230 miles away from Yellowstone. So on the global context, it's very, very close. In terms of the local geology, it's certainly uh, not directly connected to Yellowstone. But when you start to see significant earthquake activity here, at least you should be paying a little bit more attention to the nearby areas and Yellowstone is part of that group, you could say. So that is why I'm looking at this earthquake swarm very closely. Perhaps we're ramping up to another significant earthquake in this area, that is very possible. Idaho has had some big earthquakes as we discussed in the last video. Magnitude seven earthquakes are not uncommon in Idaho. So that is very possible. So if you live in this area, definitely take precautions. And in the last video, quite a few people said that this earthquake swarm that's occurring near Stanley, Idaho was being induced by oil and gas fracking. And while it's true that that industry can trigger earthquakes, especially as the underlying geology gets more and more fractured, that whole zone can become more seismically active. We're seeing that really in Texas, though other places as well. That is not the case for Stanley, Idaho, it seems, because we see all our oil and gas areas over here near Boise, we don't really have them up in the mountains. And the earthquake swarm specifically is occurring right around this junction zone here. So it does not look like it's relayed. There is quite a lot of hydrothermal activity in there. There's a lot of hot springs. There's actually a geothermal well fairly close by. So there is that, but it's a different system as it relates to geothermal than oil and gas. So they are similar in how they operate but this is certainly a earthquake swarm as a result of geologic and tectonic activity, not induced by man-made oil and gas drilling. And if we go back to our USGS latest earthquakes map, but this time set for the past 30 days, you'll notice that this 4.3 that occurred in Clayton is still the highest magnitude earthquake for this map area, followed by these magnitude fours in Idaho. But I wanna specifically punch in on Yellowstone because we have been talking about that. And you'll notice that already our highest magnitude earthquakes are just 2.7. So these are quite minor. So we haven't been having any really significant earthquakes 
from Yellowstone over the past month in terms of the magnitude. A uh, high magnitude earthquake for a volcanic system would be like a magnitude 4, even a magnitude 4.5 or greater. We saw magnitude 4 earthquakes occur recently at Campy Flagre. That's pretty notable. Sometimes you get magnitude 5 or even magnitude 6 earthquakes. So that's very, very rare as a result of volcanic activity, a volcano waking up or the movement of fluids or magma deep underground. But typically a high magnitude earthquake for a volcanic system is like magnitude 4 plus. We're not seeing that. We're only seeing magnitude two and lower earthquakes for the past month in Yellowstone. So everything seems to be normal there as it relates to the seismic signature. Of course, there could be other things that are occurring. It's really this zone there in Stanley, Idaho and nearby with Clayton that has been showing a lot of seismic activity. It'll be really interesting to see how that continues forward, not only for the rest of June, but going all the way through 2025 because as we can see again with our cumulative seismic energy release from 2020 to now, we are back on an uptrend with that, kind of indicating that there could potentially be a high magnitude earthquake coming to that area. And this earthquake swore may be foreshock activity, indicating that something big may be on the way. And one last thing to point out as it relates to this earthquake swarm, if we broaden our perspective out to the sun, we see a very large coronal hole just now starting to rotate into view on the earth facing side. This is an area where the magnetic field on the sun is open and streams out directly into space and can connect to the earth once it enters into a geoaffected position. And that will occur in about seven to 10 days. Now a coronal hole emits a high speed stream of ions. Again, it has its own unique open magnetic field. This one has a positive polarity. So it connects with the earth in a very unique way. And we've been seeing significant earthquake activity as a result of this coronal hole high speed stream impact reoccurring on a regular monthly basis. We had this coronal hole high speed stream geoeffective right around the time of that magnitude 7.7 .7 earthquake in Myanmar, Burma and the following earthquake activity that's been occurring globally since. So I'm pointing this out because we very well could have another increase in earthquake activity as a result of that coronal hole high speed stream connecting to the earth magnetically and inducing some interesting geophysical effects. And I would say in general, anywhere that's already seismically active is going to be more likely to resonate with this and perhaps get triggered and have a significant release of seismic energy like from a high magnitude earthquake. So we don't have any guarantee that this coronal hole high speed stream will trigger significant seismic activity around the globe, but I would say it's a heightened probability. That's it for today's video. Thank you all so much for watching. Again, I've been your host, Stefan Burns. This is what we cover on the channel. We look at what's happening geologically. Also, we examine the geophysical energies on our planet. We examine solar activity, space weather. That seems to have a pretty profound effect on our geophysics here on Earth. We also examine planetary resonances and even cosmic forces. I bring all that information together, present videos almost daily. We're trying to understand the greater holistic pattern that is unfolding at this moment in time. If you like the sound of that, then please subscribe, smash that like button, help this channel grow. And if you'd like to more directly share your support, then I have a bunch of holistic wellness products available on my website at wildfreeorganic.com store, all herbal tea blends, earthing shoes, and more. So please check that out. Thank you all so much. Wishing all of you well, and I'll see you all in the next video.